Hello and welcome to my class. In today's class, I will give you a short summary of the lesson Deep Water written by William Douglas. William Douglas was born in Maine, Minnesota in the year 1898. When he was two years old, he was affected by infantile paralysis that left him weak and thin. After his father's death, his family moved to Yakima. He studied economics and English in college. He worked as an English teacher for two years. Then he studied law and worked at the Yale University as a faculty. He was appointed as Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court at the age of 40. He is the youngest and the longest serving Supreme Court judge in the history of the United States. He died in the year 1980. His book of men and mountains tells us about his connection with nature. Deep water is an excerpt from of men and mountains. In this lesson, he tells us about two negative experiences with water that took place in his formative years of childhood, which caused a fear that rooted deep in his mind, a fear for deep water. The fear of water is called as aquaphobia. There are many degrees of this fear. The author has fear only for deep water and especially when he is in it. This lesson is about how he freed himself from the grip of fear and anxiety with his willpower and perseverance. When the author was 10 or 11 years old, he decided to learn to swim at the YMCA in Yakima. He thought that the YMCA pool was safe. The pool had a 2 to 3 feet shallow end and a 9 feet deep end. He went to the pool in his swimming attire and a pair of water wings. Even his embarrassment for his skinny legs did not stop him. He already had an aversion for water. Once, when he was three or four years old, he had gone to a beach in California with his father. There, he was knocked down by a forceful wave. Though his father laughed it off as an harmless incident, as a child, he could never forget the unexpected encounter with the waves that bowled him over in a frightful way. The author was trying to overcome his fear and was trying to get comfortable with water at the YMCA pool. And that is when the second traumatizing incident took place. One day, a bully of a boy wanted to pull a prank on the author and the prank went terribly wrong. The bully tossed the author into the 9 feet deep end of the pool. The author was intimidated by the sudden attack. He swallowed some water on the way to the bottom of the pool. But he was not extremely scared to the level of not knowing what to do. He had planned to kick the bottom of the pool once he reached it, make a big jump, come to the surface and paddle to the edge of the pool. But when he reached the bottom of the pool, he could not execute his plan to the exact because he was moving upward very slowly. Somehow he reached the surface of the water, but he couldn't paddle to the edge of the pool. What really happened was he swallowed some water, choked and sunk again. He tried to scream. He remembered his strategy. But he saw only the yellow light, which increased his fear. His body turned rigid and paralyzed. Only the aching lungs and the throbbing head assured him that he was alive. He tried his level best to come out of the water. He used all his energy, but nothing worked the way he planned. But the futility of his effort drove him to the extent of accepting his end. He was too tired to execute his strategy. For the third time, he surfaced again, but went downward again. This time, he had no hope of survival. But someone saved him. He was too exhausted when he went home. He totally avoided the pool after that fateful incident. This traumatizing event during his childhood, this near drowning episode in his life, developed a phobia in him. 
Later, as an adult, he started exploring the mountains and this aversion for water was haunting him. The scary occurrences in his childhood had left him with a scar for many years to follow. He tells us about the places where he used to go for fishing. He talks about landlocked salmon fishing in Maine Lake in Washington and on the Columbia River at Bumping Lake in Cascades. Bass fishing in New Hampshire, trout fishing on Deschutes and Metolius in Oregon. It spoiled his fishing adventures and prevented him from enjoying his boat trips, canoe rides and swimming. So he decided to confront his fear and take charge of his life. He hired a very patient instructor to learn to swim. The specifically trained swimming instructor made him comfortable in the pool. They created an action plan and came up with effective ideas like using the pulley. It took him three months to feel comfortable in water. With strong willpower, determination and perseverance, he practiced diligently. Then the author learned to kick with his legs. They took small steps together. Nearly after six months, he was able to swim from one end of the pool to the other. His swimming classes were done. Then, he tried to swim alone in the pool. He was able to do that too. He treated his phobia by repeatedly exposing himself to the source of his fear. To test his fear of deep water, he went to Lake Wentworth in New Hampshire. He dived off a dock in the Triggs Island and swam two miles to Stamp Act Island. En route, he tried different styles of swimming. But once, when he had put his head down underwater and realized how deep the lake was, he got a streak of his old fear, but he was able to challenge his fear itself. Then he wanted to test his newfound skills in the Northwest American water bodies. He then went to the warm lakes. He was able to swim the full stretch of the lake back and forth. His interaction with water made him more confident. His old sense of fear and anxiety never returned. He was happy that he was able to swim like Doug Corcoran. Doug Corcoran was his friend, his travel companion and he was also a doctor. All we have to fear is fear itself, said Franklin D. Roosevelt. His experience of overcoming the fear was more meaningful. He learned to control his fear successfully. Everything is possible if you believe in yourself. I hope you all understood the lesson very well. Check the description box for other related videos. For more such videos, hit the subscribe button, keep the bell icon on, like the video and share the video with your classmates. See you in next class.